that, Damn, that so, was. <laughs> so that last bit. Yeah. So it's like, so I was trying to put that thing, the rhythm I was doing before. I was trying to like put that on this tape. Okay. I'm like, oh, I like that rhythm. I'm gonna put that on a tape and I'll mix that later. But then, you know, it's like. How long can somebody do? Can can you repeat something over and over again before you you get like physically bored? Very true. So then I'm like, oh, I'll put this tape on. But then I just found that like that thing that was just on this tape, like that little like like that. Now I have to like make a whole. Now I have to make a whole tape of that. That's too cool. Like that is too cool. How did you come about doing this? Were you just experimenting one day, or or how did you? Because because the setup you have is. Pretty, pretty interesting. I've never. It's pretty never specific. It. it really is. It's How like you... it's specific. And I, I mean, like it does this. You know, it like you. It's good for cutting tapes up, like sound on tapes. I mean, I this grew out of like another project that I was doing. Uh, so it's like pretty, pretty organically, which is like the best way things can come about. You know, it's like exactly. I had an I, like I had like this project to do where I was like reading something. I like I can't even remember. Oh, I, I like um. I like, you know, I wanted to like, t I was like reading something, I was like doing some sort of like poem or something, and I wanted to like talk at the same time as myself. And so you're like, oh, low, like tapes provide a low tech, very inexpensive solution to that, to sample, to all sampling needs, right? So that was pretty natural, like, you know, you put your voice on a tape and you read along to it. But <clears throat> I, uh, then I started kind of just, it, it gradually kind of got more musical, and I was doing more and more kind of like tape collage stuff, you know, because. It's got it's got like the quickest route to like I make a sound I put it in this thing and then I'm now I hit play and now exactly. it's going because it's very mechanical you know you don't need learning curve is very broad exactly uh, so I started doing this like based on to like not for music but then I started playing in this band at doing the like doing like samples and stuff on tapes and then that progressively got more musical and then I had to like I just and then I just like kind of never stopped so it's like it turned it started as like this conceptual art piece like oh I'm gonna like put stuff on tape and like play tapes. I love Throbbing Gristle, you know? Uh, but then it just got more musical and then and now it's like got to this point where I just never stopped doing it. So it's like one project, this, I thought it was just gonna be one project and then it just like turned into my instrument and now I do this all the time. That's amazing. Now I like to, because it's, it's very musical. Like I, it gets really, it gets you to a musical place. So once, once you get something and you can actually play it, you can just spend the rest of your life sure. doing it. You know, it's like this is like, loop pedal is like a violin to me. Now you know, like now I, I wish you know, like I wish I could play a violin well. Whoa, that's crazy. What that was wall that? was just was the wall moving. That wall was just popping out. From, on the wall's popping. <laughs> yeah, this place is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> this place is fucking haunted. Someone, I think, I think David said that to me. So now I have to like now I have to make a whole tape of just that like. <clears throat> That's some crazy ass delay. I couldn't figure out what that was. Oh, that sounds so Lion King. <laughs> Just so like. So you wind up getting like the system. It winds up because it's tapes. You wind up getting like a really nice mixture of types of sounds of like sounds gleaned from different parts mm -hmm. of your life, like. I think that that's completely based on the kind of sampler that you have or use, you know, like um, if you have like a, you know, you have used an Akai sampler, like yeah. the more, you know, you use an Akai sampler, you use like a, one of those boss samplers or something like that. Like, based on how it work, how the, the machine functions, like you're going to necessarily get sounds from certain places, like, you know, you, like wherever you're getting, you're just picking up files and like, if it's like a digital thing, it's like files and you stick it into a sampler and like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the kinds of sounds you're likely to encounter are going to be, it's like, it's almost like, are going to be like where they usually are for that machine. You know, you're like, I, I got some, I got some data for you. Like, oh, you go to some website and you find all these files, these drum files or mm -hmm. something, you know. But, uh, uh, or like, you know, you're, or it has like a mic on it. So you're like walking around sampling stuff. It's like the machine itself will like get, it's like, it's like there's certain kinds of sounds that end up on certain kinds of samplers. It's almost like anthropology of samplers, Very you know, true. something like that. So, exactly, exactly. so tapes have like a really great, really wide swath of kinds of sounds that you're likely to encounter because these things are completely ubiquitous and they're dead media. Like people are like, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> so there's just all this garbage laying around and there's, so there's like real music, there's like random, you know, like there's tape recorders everywhere that people just have tape recorders, you know, like there's a, it's, you get a really great swath of data, way more, way better than any, when you use this as a sampler, you get a, the swath of data that you're drawing from is way bigger. You know, so like this, like this is some some people were like practicing 
like horns in a room, and I just happen to have a tape deck and a tape recorder because I'm that kind of guy. But it's and that's like, what the recording is. It's horns. So it's, it's like three people, but it's in a room, so it's very like live and active, and like that's the awesome. kinds of sounds that they're playing. It's very practice. It's not like a performance. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like because of the of, of where you where tapes are like socially, like you know, like have a tape a tape a tape recorder in your pocket. You just happen to have one. So like this, like if I use another kind of sampler, I could it would be harder to get this kind of thing. I have to like have an idea and sample that thing, and then like I reroute it, rewire it, reroute it, rewire it. You know, like exactly. and there'd be a couple more steps, and just those exactly. couple more steps would impede you maybe from doing that. It's very true. So like I'm interested in these kind of sounds, and that's why they're on tape. That that's why I use tape. It's like there's lots of practical concerns and why I like I, I like kind of learned how to play this, but but. Uh, I really like the kinds of sounds you find on tape, and that's like the really interesting part. So, oh, it's so nice. Really, it's like it's like they're lifting Simba into the you know like you know what I'm saying like a, all that the light touches is yours. <laughs> So there's sound on this tape, right? See, that's, that's the other problem. If you don't label them like decently, you like look at your labels. That was Turekalai. What's that? There's also a lot of warmth that comes off off of these tapes, which, which for I mean, at least now a lot of people are, are into more digital yeah. kind of sounds, and it's uh, you know from the, from a digital aspect, you don't hear the kind of warmth coming out from analog. Analog yeah, machines. Like. Well, that's why that's why digital and analog. That's why like, you know, you'd think that like the switch to digital would be for like in the normal reasons why humans uh, develop technology like to get better at things. Like, exactly. and that's why that's why like that's why it's gotten to this point. Like, exactly. digital is great. It's very easy to manipulate everything. You get whatever you want. You, you, and but when you get whatever you want, when you can do anything, the amount of decisions you have to make is a lot more, and that's. That that's why I think that's one of the reasons why people are like, oh, digital's hard and cold and like because it it only does what you want it to. It's a robot. It's only it, you know you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Analog is like much we actually like kind of metaphorically or physically relate to these things because it's much more physical. It makes a lot of decisions for you. It like and you have to constantly kind of like move it around like get it to do things exactly. like get it to sound like something because it has its own personality. It has its own physicality. The, the digital is not physical. It's all in like the computer's brain. We're like mixing our metaphors like crazy here, but that's essentially I think that's what it is. And like that's why like you know that people I, it blows my mind that people are always like like analog is warm, digital is cold. But digital does something. It was developed to do something. True. So we needed to, it, we we needed it to be colder. We need that cold. And we were like this is too warm in here. You know like <laughs> God I, and like no really like you're like God I hate it how hard it is and how much t time it takes to make a tape loop to like cut a tape and like loop it. You know, it takes so much time. It's physical. It takes physical time. You know, th like this, it's like mental time. You're on brain time on the computer. It just does it. You just like hit a few buttons and it does it. You know, or they they develop these. These are digital machines. These loop pedals. You know, these just do the thing that you want to do. It loops it. So you don't have to muck around with it. I, I love living now. Like that, like, it, it, tape loops are awesome. But if I lived like in the generation, the previous tape musician. Gen generation like making tape loops I, like I probably wouldn't be doing that because it would take too much time and I would do it once maybe I mean I don't know like I'm totally speculating here but you know what I mean like I know exactly what you mean you know so it's like this does something I'm glad that that there's this but now I think now what's what's great about making music now is that you get to have this like you get to make a decision or not make a decision you get to like you ha you ha you have both you have the warmth it's not like technology went on and you, we leave all this stuff behind. It's like, you know, we don't leave this stuff behind. It's still around, you know, and like we can, now we get whatever we want, but we can go backwards too, and like for specific aesthetic reasons. And that's why like these things are cool. You know, let's see, what's your, what's your blog called? Uh, Blunt Guts Nation. What's it? Blunt Guts Nation. Blunt Guts? Yes. Blunt Guts, okay. Blunt Guts Nation. Blunt Guts. Blunt Guts. See. See, it's funny because I have to like, like, like I was saying, like I have to label it right away because if you just, if you, I swear to God, like, I mean, my brain is like maybe not that great, but I'll, you know, all these tapes, like you, 
you, they quickly get out of control. So you're, you're like, that was awesome. I put it on this tape. Then you put it down and then you look down and you're like, what, where did that go? <laughs> what the hell? You know, so if you don't, if you don't write at least something on it to differentiate it, like I tend to kind of like go with the moment. So it's like, here, you're here. I just made this in front of you. That's what it's called. This tape is called Blunt Guts now. It's called Blunt Guts. Now I have to sit over here and like actually label it nice like. Because if I don't label it nice like, I won't play it. Because when I play, I'm not like reading, I can't read. Exactly. You know, so I have to be like, pink tape. Tape with the blue sounds like this. Tape with the, this purple tape, ha I know that this has on it because it's like, it's like not, it's like that part of my brain isn't really working that great when you're playing. Pretty because sure. you're like in this like softer, more all feelings like part of your brain or whatever, you know? <laughs> so like for some reason it's not connected to the like, you know, this is violins. Like if I, if I just wrote like violins on it, I'd be like, violins, great. I wouldn't touch it, you exactly. know? But if it's like, if it looks like this, if it looks like all pretty, then, you know, my like baby brain, like the animal brain you're playing with, you know, you get in front of people, like you don't know what's gonna happen, so. And that it's like, it's like this animalistic thing, like that's the part of the brain that's engaged, so in that mindset, I can be like, purple tape, purple tape sounds great with pink tape, you know, like pink triangle tape sounds great with pyramid tape, it's just, oh, it's great, the trident, uh, trident tape sounds great with, you know, whatever the hell this is. You know, whatever the flower, like weird flower. Oh, lush buns, lush buns. Oh, this just says lush, lush. <laughs> oh, lush, lush, right. Like this, the way this tape looks is how it sounds to me. But it, it's all, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it is kind of, get, it gets kind of arbitrary, but it's essentially like a personal, like hieroglyphic relationship. So, you know, like you, you know, you can just make up a language and you're the one who knows it. Like, it's a problem teaching it to people, you know. So, I don't even need to worry if all this stuff doesn't actually mean anything because I'm, you know, it's, it's me. So, like, I, I know, I, I label this, I know what's on it. I know that beach fib, betch fibs. Oh, this is funny. Uh, I wrote B-E-C-H and anyone who sees this is like, oh, beach. But it doesn't say beach, it's just There's betch. no A, it's There's no A, what's wrong? It's just betch. They're like, oh, beach tape. Oh, betch. I'm like, it's betch fibs. Vib vibes. On, on betch vib. It's betch vib. Betch, betch. betch vibes. They're like, isn't that is that betch vibes? I'm like, bit vibs. Yeah, no, you know, it's like you get personal. It's like exactly. You get personal. So, okay, so this so this is what I'm doing now. I have to break these tapes. So like, um, these are tapes that are like really long. See, here's betch here's betch, betch, vibes. betch vibes. So these tapes are really long, and like they need to like I need to make smaller like more active, more like touched sampling tapes out of them. Okay. So I was just keeping a list of, I have to break these tapes. So what I was just doing in front of you was I was breaking Camp Chant and Evil Horns into, and I have to break it into, you know, uh, what is it, Blunt, blunt Guts. And like, so, I have to, so these tapes will turn into like four smaller uh, sample tapes okay. for eventually remixing. So, you know, because these are just like broad, kind of like tapes that are just like, uh, they have like found sound on them. It's just like someone in a this is someone in a campsite, like wow. chanting and playing something that I like recorded a million years ago. And I don't know, but it's like it's cool. But like statistically speaking, only uh, maybe like ten percent of the tape is actually cool. Okay. So and that's a long tape. So I have to I have to mix this tape, get like cue up the the interesting part, and then like kind of loop that or figure something else out and put that on a smaller tape so that when and that keeps down the likelihood of when I'm playing a set uh, that I grab a tape and I throw it on and I press play in front of people and it's just like silence. You know, like I, I, so I have to, you have to, you have to keep, it's like you're cooking the tapes. You have to keep like boiling them down and making them more and more interesting, you know. You know, I've never told anyone this before. I've never even talked about this before. This is an exclusive. Very, it's very exclusive. <laughs> very exclusive. Very exclusive. So yeah, I have to break these tapes. So, so that's cool. I can just, I can say, so now this this tape, these two tapes mixed together turn into blunt guts, and then whatever the hell. Oh, that's a great. Oh, Lion King. That's perfect. <clears throat> it's very it, organic. Very very organic. It's like the definition of organic. It really it's like is. as organic as possible. <laughs> you know, because because it's like. You know, you have to make a lot of decision. You know, like people think like, oh, I, you know, I I love making art like. Because it's like I just get to make all the decisions. Like it's like total freedom. I get to do whatever I want. Like I like that too. But I also like I also kind of want to encounter something. I don't want to like make all the decisions. I want to like I, that's what you know, when you're being organic. That's like the pleasure of being organic. Like I, I get to like 
I get to like mix this stuff together and that's pretty, that's freedom. Like we're in like studio system setting right now and I get to like do whatever I want. But when I play, I kind of want to be able to make order. I want to, I want to make order. I want to encounter something, you know? So I want to, I want to be able to, you know, construct order, but I, I kind of want the, I just want to get it into a position where I don't have to make decisions and that's even more freedom. That's like even more freeing where like, I don't have to make decisions anymore because the system I set up when I was in my studio, uh, just results in me encountering this thing in front of everyone. And then it's like, it's like the audience and me are encountering it together. Like, and, and it's funny, like in a very small extent, like it just happened in front of like you and me, we're just standing here exactly. and I'm like, Oh my God, this sounds just like the, when they lifted Simba in the Lion King up to the, up to the light. Like, Oh my God, I just found this on this tape. Now I can like, now instead of taking evil horns to a gig, which has a lot of empty space on it and some cool horn stuff and some talking, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I can boil it down and just take the Lion King tape, okay. which has this awesome like hook, like weird hook with loops and like weird. It'll still be weird, but I've like statistically made it so that it's more likely to be awesome, exactly, or interesting, or pleasing, or something. You know, like or like, and I and so I, it's like freeze the encounter, break the tape. And then, you know, like, then this is, when I play this in front of people, that's like, that's like total freedom. It's that, like, that's like the audience and you are encountering at the same time. And you're like looking up at people like, Lion King, right? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like bacon smells, right? <laughs> right? I'm just yelling at the audience like that. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Doesn't this sound like bacon smells? What's wrong with you people? <laughs> All my equipment's off. <laughs> Is he gonna do something? He's just yelling at us. <laughs> now, do you release these tapes to, to the public? <clears throat> yeah, I like uh, I release music like any musician. You know, like like it's uh, this is pretty like you know here we are standing here and this it's this pretty uh, arty, uh, <laughs> but it's but you can actually play this as an instrument and I do that. So in that idiom, I do release music which could tentatively be called tape music, but it, it's basically like a lot of freeform collage and stuff like that. And I make like pieces and I'll, I'll like riff on themes and I really like like really long Wagnerian epic like tape collages that go on forever and you, you put them on and like turn your brain off, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really like that, but you keep, but like, uh, you know, but then, so that's one project and like I do like, I do like this solo and it's just me playing, making a tape collage for everyone, encountering something in front of you. Uh, but then because the, the system's pretty normalized, I've been playing it for a while, it's playable. So I, I can, I, I play this in a band, like I'm, I do various other projects, like I've, I've done like, you know, music for theater, which is like pretty conducive to that because it's, you got, you get that weird warmth and that's like a hard thing, you know, like when you're, you're like doing theater, you, you're locking everything down and making sure everything goes exactly right, you know. So this is like manufacturing a little bit of chaos because it's it's got that warmth, it's got that like you know humanness because of the tapes, and because I'm actually like shuttling the tape back and forth with my hand, it nice and and I can control it really well. Like I could just you know like what I was doing, I could just repeat that, I could just do that Pretty again. True. But it's only because I've been playing this thing for like ten years and I made it up. So that's what I'm saying. It's eminently playable. So I release music, but I also like play in bands and like play. It's like in a non-release kind of thing, you know. So. That's what, it's really funny because it's like this came out of a conceptual art piece, and I could just like sit, show up and be like, "This is my I'm a conceptual artist. This is uh, my concept. This is my concept. Tape deck DJ, woo!" You know. But I actually, I, so I, I want like a multi-layered approach to this. Like, it's like if this is like some sort of conceptual art, like it's not like it's not dead in the water, man. Like I want to be able to play this stuff, you know. And like I, I really, I really, that's my favorite kind of thing. That's like my favorite kind of stuff is when you make a piece of art that is itself a generator for other pieces of art, for other p things or pieces like, you know, you make like a system that then, then you can make music with or you make like a, you know, a painting that then can be used in the background of a play or something exactly. and then you take video of that and then you remix it and play it over yourself while you're playing music. I don't know, you know, like I really like art that interlocks and like births other... It keeps creating. Keeps creating, and, like yeah. it itself is like when you make, you, you know, teach a man to fish, you know, no, it's like you, ma you make one piece and then it's just like, there, I did it, it's, it's done. I kind of don't like that. I like that super organic, like never ending thing. Cause it's kind of like me being alive. Exactly. You know, so like I'm, I'm pretty into that, but uh, you know, I, I just realized it's funny. Like I'm, I'm just doing this. I get this question all the time where it's like, people just think I, I, you can't reproduce this at all. You know, and it's funny. It's like, I'm actually like playing this. Like, dude, I'm actually playing this stuff. I'm not just 
playing with my shit in front of, not just playing with my poop in front of you. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna do this all day. I love this. Something's up here because that particular, that's making this delay pedal like freak out. It's like the, the it, uh, that something's happened. So we've got a particularly delicious mixture uh, or intersection. And that, that's, that's all about, it's like, it's like, really, it's like encountering, uh, I don't, like, I, I, I'd love to use a word other than delicious because it's about food, but it's like encountering very delicious coincidences. So like, I'm trying to, when you make, when you make these tapes, it's like, I know it's on these tapes and I know the music that's on these things, but I'm trying to like, get it to be, I'm trying to find an interesting coincidence that maybe I didn't know about, you know? Because I, I, like, like what, what I was saying before about like getting whatever you want, like, you know, like, you can, you can dial in, you know, a James Brown setting. You can like do anything. You can get, the way music works now, especially electronic music, you can just do, you can just hit a button and it'll just do whatever the fuck you wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. And that's like actualizing your controls. You can get really megalomaniacal on anything and like really, you really actualize your desires, man. You want something, you can get it. Take it, take it, it's yours, you know? So, I, but I, I'm not like interested in that. I really want, it's actually harder or more interesting to me. It's harder to like actually get it to where you are making a mistake, but it's like this interesting intersection. It's an interesting mistake, you know? Especially like, you know, m incredibly skilled musicians who have like, mm -hmm. you know, they, they've been playing for years and years and years and they practice all the time and they just play and play and play and play and play and play. And play, and play. Like, I've been playing this for a long time, and you lose, like, that weird risk excitement thing, you know, when it's, like, not crazy, and it's shit isn't crazy anymore. It's just, you, I just did what I wanted to do. Great. You know, so, like, I don't want to do that, so I'm, like, constantly trying to make things super hard for myself, and, man, it's really hard to get tapes to do the same thing over and over again. You know what I'm saying? I know like, exactly. it's really, they, they are stupid, they break, they are, they're, like, dirty, they sound bad, mm -hmm. or good, or whatever, depending on your proclivity, you know. So I'm saying, like, do anything for a really long time and you're going to get so good at it that you're going to be bored as shit. So it's, you have to like, that's why people are constantly making up weird bands or like doing albums that don't make any sense. You know, it's because it was interesting for them. People are like, what the hell's wrong? Bitches. What's wrong with him? Why'd exactly. he, why he put out that like really stupid Brazilian pop record? That guitarist is sick. Why did he do that? Why did he just make up a, ba a band for, to play this music that I don't like? Why did he do that? It's stupid. It's because he was bored. So it's like I'm like I'm glad you, know, you brought that point up. You know, like he was bored. So like I, you know, like I, I'm, I'm really good at fucking playing tapes right now. I'm really good at it. I've been. It's only because I do it all the time. It's not like I'm real good because I like am a really good guy. It's just I did it a lot. I do it all the time. So you do anything all the time, you're gonna be good at it. So I'm constantly trying to like make myself do bad. So it's so by like mixing horrible garbage or like you know some some of the, one of these tapes there's like. There's like a trick tape in here where it's there's just it's just like you know it's like the stupidest sound ever. You throw that on the middle of the set, you better be you gotta really actualize your skill to like get good on that. You know, um, <laughs> what I'm talking about. Now I've been to the uh, the Silent Barn before. Yeah. For those who have it, could you could you explain the Silent Barn and what you guys do there? And okay. Well, that's it's good that to you bring it up vis a vis this project because you know like I I do like sample based music and I'm constantly like you know recording stuff and like walking around with the tape deck and stuff. Um, the Silent Barn is a it's my house I've lived there for a number of years but we do performances in it and so it's kind of like blurring the line between a house and a public space you know and I, I really like that dynamic me personally it's you know it's, it gets really crazy because we I'm con there's constantly people in my house but for what I did, it, it dovetails perfectly with what I do with the with the tapes, with uh, with my with my work, because there's constantly new information coming in. There's constant like it's constantly inspiring, you know. Uh, so it's like 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 this, like these horn tapes. It's just like there was a band practicing in my kitchen, which is also where people play. Mm -hmm. So it's like you play in the kitchen. It's like this big you know warehouse room, right? But it's like a, that's what I'm saying. It, it, like it. 
it makes a lot of sense with my work and life in particular. You know, so it, it's it. I get asked to. I get asked like, how can you stand it a lot? You know, like how could you stand people in your house all the time? And it's like, it's like uh, privacy is kind of an illusion, man. Everyone's like looking at you all the time and recording. You go home and you're like, oh, no one can see me, but that's a very small amount of time. I'm sorry, man. You leave the house, you're you're fucked. You know. You love the house, right? Just stay in your house all the time. Like, I, I, I just get so... My friend is from India is like, this is just like India. No privacy. And it really, you know, you're like, privacy is an illusion. In the 21st century, I'm watching you, motherfucker. You know? Um, <laughs> but so, yeah. Uh, like, I, you know, yeah. I live at the, the barn. But I, I'm really into it. Um, I'm, you know, I'm into it for lots of different reasons. It, where it makes a lot of sense with my work. Uh, recording stuff, it's uh, very inspiring to me as a musician and a person, and it's also like, I really get up into uh, like, uh, lore, local lore, you know, and the, the house has changed hands a lot, it's been, it's gone through lots of different iterations, uh, so it's just, it's the community, community vibe is palpable, you know, it's like, it's like artistic community, which is, you know, like it, the internet, and being what it, what it is, like, Everyone's like, my community's over here. It's I'm, my community is eight people that I talk to, and this many times, and I, I and you're just like typing and stuff like that. Like, this is the opposite of that. This is like that's digital, and this is analog. Like, you know, I live at, I live at the Silent Barn, and we have shows there, and that means that there are people pulling stuff that they care about, and there's passion, and then there is excitement, and there's creativity, and it's all mushing together in this like bubbling. The the quote is bubbling human stew. You know, it's like really like it gets very very palpably interesting and exhilarating, you know, to the point where, like, that's how, like, I, I, I love living like that because it's really, it's really inspiring. So, you know, like, that's, that's culture, like, that's in, that's the front lines. That's, like, I want to, like, experience this, like, I don't want to just make art and then, like, talk about it. I want to, like, dip myself in it. I want to be completely, so then when I talk about it, I know what I'm, I know I'm not lying to myself. I know, and other, you know, like, to some extent, people could know that I'm not lying to you. I'm not just, like, making some shit up, you know. I, uh, but it's more for me, like, I know I am, I know I know what I'm talking about because I am dipped in it, I am in, I'm, uh, I'm in the culture, I'm in culture, I'm, I'm making, uh, like, and it, it makes a lot of sense when you're, when you, you know, you want to be an artist, it's like, you're doing something and then you, you can talk about it, or you just talk about it, or you can just do it and not talk about it, there's all these different, like, permutations of, like, how to, like, deal with your work or deal with your creativity or, like, get whatever is in here out of your face, you know, get it out into the people for whatever fucking reason, whatever motivation you're going to do, you, you, you want it. But, like, I, I want to, like, you know, I want to, like, look back on, on it, like, you know, I'm not going to be, like, you know, you, not, I'm not going like, to live in there for the rest of my fucking life, you know, it's be like, how can you stand it? It's like, what? Like, are you, things change, man. Exactly. Like, you know, I... Like, I'm not gonna be here, and like, this isn't gonna be happening. Like, these, this is like lightning in a bottle, and I'm gonna be really glad that I that, you did that, I, that I did, that, exactly. that I was exposed to it, you know? And like, it's gonna continue on in like, in my work anyway, because I'm like, recording stuff, it's like, you are what you do, you are like, you are like, you know, you, you are all of your associations, and like that's, and so like, I, the nature of my work is like, works perfectly with living in a place like the Silent Park. Mm -hmm. So, like, so yeah, I mean, you've been there. You know, <laughs> like, I left so, completely with my mind blown, and I went home and just, went, just worked on music, yeah, man, because it was right. just inspiring. See, and like that's, and like I, I, that's how I get. That's what I want. I want to like. I don't want to like have to man. I don't want to have to like flex inspiration like a muscle. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to like. Okay, now get back up. Like get up. Like I want to be constantly propelled. I want the encounter. So it like makes sense. I keep saying that, but I, it makes sense with, with, with uh, like what I do. But that's. That's like the state I want. That's the state I want to live in. I want to have my mind blown every fucking second to the point where it's just this unbroken, blown mind. You know, so what is that? It's like, we have that, we have that, uh, that phrase, humans have that phrase like, it blew my mind. So it's like, you're at this level, and then when you, like, I, I like to think of it like a graph. It's like, like, here's my mind. Then my mind gets blown. Now my mind's back to not being blown. I'm just eating or shitting or something. You know, I'm just like, no, my mind's not being blown now. But what if, you know, your mind's totally blown. All the time. All the time. Then, just mundane stuff is incredibly... Then the, then the graph looks like this. The graph looks like... Like that. You know? And then you're eating and you're like, these carrots are so delicious. Oh, God! You know, and then, like... That's like... I think that's a fun way to live. You know? Yeah, like, it's a like, great outlook. So, it's a... Uh, it's, you know, it's like, um... I can't, you know, like a... When I'm feeling negative, I constantly I feel like a dirtbag and, like, you know, I'm not making a million dollars or anything like that, but... I don't think about that too much. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a kind of life. So it's like, it's very, it's important to me to like, have this period where 
you know, if I'm not doing this all the time, maybe I will, maybe I will be like just completely doing this for the rest of my life. I'm not gonna like stop doing stuff like this, but I mean, the barn is like a special thing. Like I, you know, like I said, like I, I'm, I'm like, it's, the community is physical and it's right there. And that's what, that like feeds back into the inspirational loop of one's life. Mm -hmm. So that's like, that's like the point of, of the barn at least. Yeah, yeah, you should come over again. I definitely will, <laughs> I definitely will. Uh, we can watch The Lion King on LaserDisc. <laughs> Hold thing up on